Texas state lawmakers are close to passing some legislation in order to overhaul their state's energy grid. Now, that, uh, of course, follows the disastrous and deadly winter storm back in February that left millions of people, about nearly 5 million homes and businesses without electricity for days. In some very incredibly cold weather, uh, more than 100 people ended up dying uh, from exposure. Uh, you had, you know, millions of dollars in damage uh, when it came to, you know, burst pipes and things like that, uh, flooding. Uh, now, the solution apparently that Texas lawmakers have come to, however, in order to fix the damage is to make the regular people pay for it. That's right. Regular people. The Texas Tribune is reporting that, quote, most Texans will likely have higher charges in their power bills for years to come to cover gas utilities, electric cooperatives, and electric companies' financial losses from the storm and to prevent customers from having to pay huge bills in a short time. Which, again, they're like painting this as, hey, we're just going to space out your bill. You know, from the mess that we caused by not weatherproofing your shit, from a freak, you know, a freak ice storm. But you're still going to pay for it. Uh, but we're not going to make you pay for it all now. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Why, why, did, why are Texas residents having to pay for this at all? When it wasn't even their fault. Again, remember, the, the ice storm was so devastating to the power grid because these companies didn't, decided not to weatherize their pipelines and their operations. They did that so that they could make more profits. Like, no, we're going to cut corners. We're going to make sure, you know, that we don't have to pay for that extra weatherproofing because, oh, I mean, it's Texas. What's going to happen? A freak, a freak ice storm? Oops. Uh-oh. Not only that, but Texas itself maintains its own power grid separate from the rest of the country. Why? So they can ignore regulation. Be of course. And some of those regulations might have forced them to weatherize their grid to ensure that this doesn't happen or to have a backup. Uh, and now, as a result of them having their own grid, it's heavily deregulated. Uh, now, there are some uh, positives to that. There's a lot of downsides as well. Now, the immediate, the, the only positive that you could think of is, well, they have very competitive rates. Uh, when things are working normal, when, you know, when the gas is flowing, uh, you can get some pretty cheap prices out of them, okay? But when things happen, and this is why regulation is important, it's why having a backup grid investment is important. When stuff happens... You have that backup, you have that supply, and you don't have these out of control, insane prices. What you saw, of course, in, in Texas after the storm, you had these companies charging people tens of thousands of dollars in bills for just a couple of days usage. I mean, it's really awful, really awful. And so, yes, it was their fault. The grid went down and now their free market system is looking for a little bit of socialism to pay for their losses. Free market, you know, free market for these, socialism for me. Uh, according to the Tribune, lawmakers are close to passing two bills that would allow the companies to seek billions of dollars in state-approved bonds backed by charges on customers' bills to stabilize the state's distressed energy market. After state electricity regulators set power prices to maximum rate, $9,000 per megawatt hour and natural gas fuel spices I'm sorry, prices spiked during the storm. Many companies, especially natural gas utilities and rural electric cooperatives, were financially wrecked. Others owe massive debts to the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. Lawmakers may soon approve about $4.5 billion in ratepayer-backed bonds for natural gas utilities and another $2 billion in such bonds for electric cooperatives. Additionally, the House Bill 4492 would loan about $800 million to ERCOT, which is the uh, Electrical Liability Council of Texas, uh, through the state's Economic Stabilization Fund, known as the Rainy Day Fund, to pay for debts to the grid operator. So this is, of course, all sorts of state money, taxpayer money, going to these corporations. And then, on top of that, Texas residents are going to have to pay with higher electric prices. Now, ERCOT, by the way, is a transaction house for the electricity market. It's essentially an auction. 
So when companies apparently couldn't pay their debts after the storm, the other companies got shorted for the electricity that they sold. ERCOT will then pass on the cash to companies who are owed money. The state's rainy day fund, by the way, for 2020, ended with a balance of nearly $10 billion. Well, if they have so much in their rainy day fund, why are you charging the customers more? What is the point of the rainy day fund? If you're just going to turn around and not use it for a rainy day, or in this case, a snowy day. Um, I mean, especially when the alternative is to raise rates for people for something that they had absolutely nothing to do with. I mean, the fact that this was the fault of the companies for cutting corners in order to make more profit just makes it even more disgusting. It's total bullshit. As one Texas resident writes, so let me get this right. Electric company failed to provide contractual service to me. We sat without electricity for seven days. House water pipes froze and burst. House got flooded. But the company gets money. And I pay for their financial troubles. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. That's right. 100%. You, uh, my friend, just got completely and utterly screwed. Another person says, so I sat in the freezing cold for three days and Governor Greg Abbott's solution is to raise my rates so that the power company can make up for those days that I didn't pay them? Texas Governor Greg Abbott needs to go. And then finally, so the power grid companies get to keep their profits, provide inferior products, face no consequences, and if they decide to improve their services, the consumers pay for it? In what reality does this make sense? Well, it makes sense in, in, in uh, end-stage capitalism, Texas style. This is what happens with, with, with Republican conservative governance. And by the way, uh, speaking of, uh, I see some of you talking about uh, alternative energy. They're also in this budget going and attacking solar and, and, and wind and geothermal. You know, because, of course, blaming them for, oh, they didn't have enough reserve power. And that's why, that's why energy is so expensive. It didn't have anything to do with oil and gas not being weatherized. Republicans. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.